Welcome back to Vice Grip Garage and part three of Project Hemi Chevy over here, which is where I'm taking a Gen 3 Hemi and stuffing it into this 1982 Chevrolet Silverado. Nope. It's a custom deluxe, but it's basically the same thing. There's a lot of work to be had yet, but today is a monumental day because if all goes well, we're actually going to be putting that Hemi in with the transmission. Now, once again, I'm using Holly's kit. Basically, they build this for you to swap a Hemi into a Chevy. It just came out though, so I don't know how many of those have actually done it. We're hoping that it just shoehorns right in here. Well, I'm told that it does, which would be great. But as it turns out, a 2009 Charger oil pan doesn't fit in a 1980s pickup. Who would have <laughs> thunk that? I don't have it, but a Dodge dealership somewhere in North Carolina does. So an acquaintance of a friend drove all through the night last night, is getting there today at 9 a.m. when they open to pick it up for me and drive it six and a half hours back to my house. So this evening, we can hopefully get that on and get that engine in. In the meantime, I got, there's so much to do. So I'm gonna start with the seat. You know, the guy needs somewhere to sit. So if you remember the seat here, there is, you know, there's a rip in it. Oh, there it is. It'd probably clean up, but you know, let's refresh it a little bit. The back was halfway decent, actually. A little bit of tape would solve that one. But we picked up a new one from Holly Classic Trucks. And this thing looks really nice. It's actually an OEM replica. And I'm gonna put this one in. A little bit softer on the back. If you're in the south, that is terrible. You just basically start sitting in your sweat and sliding around and it's 6,940 degrees Celsius. It's not good. So I'm going with this. It's the right color. It's got a little bit more squish to her. That's going to look pretty good. They're pre-sewn. Just basically slipped these on. You just watched me do this on Route 66 with the other truck, but I'm going to show you how to do it again. It's very, very simple. Once a guy gets the top off the back here, you know, just there's bolts, stuff like that. You got to get one of these do hippie bits right there. Luckily, the Hobo Freight Kit has all that assortment in there. Bust off the tracks, you don't have to, but one of the bolts goes through here. You can just loosen these and lift it up and slide it out. The newer seats have this plastic on the back that just slips over and then you stretch it around this way and then you hog ring it from the center out. The older trucks, you have to hog ring it all the way around. If you got an older rig, start in the center, do a couple rings both directions and just keep working out and it'll come together pretty good. One tool I highly recommend, well two actually, is a high quality hog ring plier. If you go get an El Cheapo off the Jungle website or Evil Bay, they, they're junk. You're gonna fight putting rings in. The other one is this guy right here. This is a compound wire cutter. I don't know, there's science. See in here there's extra levers and stuff like that. So you can get into these old rings and it just cuts right through them like butter. If you have a standard one, you're gonna blow your wristuses out or you're not gonna have the horsepowers and the wrist torques to get those rings off. If you don't wanna get one of those, they're like 15 bucks. You can also take a death wheel and just a lot faster that way as well. I'll get this finished up quick and take this off and we'll take a look at the foam. Well, I got really lucky. This foam is in actually excellent condition slight wear right here. I'd say right when the cover wore through is when the truck got parked up. I don't need to fix any of this. We'll take a look at the springs and just make sure I don't got any busted springs that I could replace or fix, but we're good to go here. If you got to add foam, you can find kits on the interwebs or just ask your wife. She'll send you down to a hobby shop like Joann's or Susan's or Margaret's. I don't know. They sell little strips of foam, silk foam, big foam, blocks of foam. You can cut all that in and replace it, or you can get a whole thing. But all these springs seem to be doing the spring things. Nothing appears to be broken in here, which is a first for me. 
So it's as easy as just cleaning this frame up a little bit with some one grit and I'll put some uh, rust stop or rusties or whatever it's called and then we'll slip that other cover on. Well, basically got this wrapped up. Just 200 grit sandpaper, you can see where it's been sanded and then hit it with some prep all, just any, you know, break theme if you want, really. And then you guys have seen me use this a bunch. It's just a cheap rust fix. It doesn't actually fix it. What it's doing is just trying to slow it down or prevent it from getting worse. Don't want this frame to rot out. And I spritzed the springs up a little bit too. I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, by the way, there was one, oh, this guy right here. There's one broken one, but I don't think that's a big deal. That's actually the drinker side if you flip this back around. It's gonna be the same exact process for the top. Although I bet you 13 cents or a half bag of chips, we're not gonna see the same evidence of moisture. This is from, you know, the rear, the hind end sweats and the soda pops and the PBR and all that stuff going down through the seat. You usually don't see that same corrosion up here, but I could be wrong. It's late enough in the year. By the way, this is my buddy Brian. He came over to help a little bit today do some shenanigans. This here, I'm just going down the, whatever this tubey thing, pipe thingy is with the razor blade and just opening up this a little bit so we can slide this off easier. Sliding the new one in is a little bit more difficult because they're gonna be pretty taunt, but you'll get there, just work side to side. We'll make it happen. And as I was saying, look at this, original paint on this one still, virtually no moisture other than, well, that's not even really moisture there either. Excellent condition. Again, got lucky on the foam. Looks great. Brian's rebuilding these. Wire wheel, some sandpaper, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna use lacquer. Lacquer's a little bit harder to paint because it gets runs, you know, but it's a lot harder shell. Lasts a little bit longer. Look how good that back frame is. Ooh, it's a sandal. And this just slid right off. This is an excellent condition. And this is really neat. Still got the date code. 682. That must be, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that'd be color designation or if they just pop these foam things out like that. Full rebuild here. See, lacquer, you can really dig it in instead of doing a bunch of layers. Just gotta be careful not to get a run, but. A lot thicker paint and also has a better luster on it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Brand new. Lost the receipt. Four months later, that'll be dry. <laughs> Guy figured he might as well go ahead and rebuild this too. Normally the bottom foam doesn't come out this easy, but this one really didn't fight us too bad. And again, this isn't, doesn't have to be perfect, just trying to get some longevity out of this thing. Whew. Man, I have had my mix of chemicals this morning. <laughs> I'm gonna start on the seat bottom here. Got this painted up and dry. It dried foggy. The moisture, the humidities, it's, yes, it's all of it today. I'm gonna be on shirt two here pretty quick. But that's okay, it doesn't need to look nice. We're just trying to make it last. There we go. And then, grab my cover. You see, this one has that same channel, we'll call it, for lack of a better term. So I'm gonna flip this around, snap this on, and then we'll stretch it over the front and start hog in there. Yep, yeah, there we go. Throw this over there. Perfect. Tougher part. We'll start this side. We we'll start that side. All 
Very nice. No sewing, nothing. Cool. Well, I'll get some hog rings and start hogging this thing down. bottom of the seat is done. It looks fantastic. It fit great. Uh, in fact, it was a little bit big, which is fine. That's what you want. You don't want this thing to be too taut because you're not going to get it hog ringed in right. Once I get the seat together, go set it in the sun a little bit, it'll kind of shrink up and do its thing. Last step here, they have seat belt provisions. You can feel through the foam, but they have this sewn off here with this nice vinyl. So I'm just going to take this and put a slice in here so we can get our belt back through the bench seat. You might have noticed I was taking a marker and a guy marked up the hinge and the stop on the sides with the yellow marker and also the same on the front for the posts. So when I go to punch those holes through, I'm not guessing and making a bunch of holes I don't need to. There, done. Moving on to the top. This one's a little trickier. Okay, my head just started. Perfect. Gotta make sure the foam stays on the frame. That wasn't so bad either. Again, just a, just a smidge big, but you see how easy it makes the installation process. And again, this vinyl will shrink up a little bit once we get it in the sun. We want to get it ringed up first. So we'll flip it face down. And then again, I'm going to start in the center. Get it nice and taut. Work my way out. This is the strap from the front pipe. So what I'll do is ring it first and then pull the strap tight, bring it around, ring that up. And then we should just have, you know, to put the two together and we're done. Well, the seat's done and it looks fantastic. It was actually a very simple process. Even got the plastic doodabbers back on. Moving on to more interior stuff. I gotta do some treatments on this floor in here. But before I get to that point, I gotta finish cleaning this. There's a lot of just dirt and grease and grime and all sorts of stuff in here. And I put some evapo rust over there last week. Looks like it did its job, but I'm gonna pressure wash all of this out. That way I can wire wheel it, treat this and get it painted before we put the floor in this thing. By the way, I do read your fellers and fellettes comments. I spend hours a week reading them actually. And overwhelmingly I asked, do we put vinyl or carpet back in this? And it was hands down vinyl, I'd say 97.36%. So we're definitely gonna be putting a vinyl floor in this. Gonna make it a little bit trickier for me to hide the wiring harnesses if I put the Terminator where I think I'm going to put it, but that might change. Brian's here, he's a Holly guru, so he's gonna help me kind of figure out where we can put that thing. But again, let's get it cleaned up first in preparation for putting some sort of treatment down. Pushing the truck out to wash it. Brian hit the brake pedal. We got lots of brakes, locked them up which is really odd for No Brakes Garage. And then I was trying to find, you know, a muffler or some sort of tool to jam under the wheel. He said, let me try the e-brake. Well, that works too. I, I can't explain it, but uh, that's nice to know anyway. All right, got the pressure washer out. Gonna blast in some oven cleaner, 
some other chemicals you're not supposed to mix together until we get some sort of nauseous visible fumes and then just blow this thing out. Truck is back inside. Seems to be pretty dry and it's looking a lot better and thankfully the smell it's about 13.78% better. Not a lot but it's there. I think we still got a mouse house like a single wide somewhere in the dash here I'm gonna have to deal with at some point but for now we're gonna change our attention back to getting this actual engine installed. We've got the oil pan pretty close to getting here. Uh, we're assembling the other half of the motor mounts right now. This is how they'll look on the block basically. Right here the metal part comes in a separate box from the polyurethane bushing and you just follow the constructions whip them up together this is going to go on the engine and theoretically this is going to drop right in there right it's going to this is going to drop this is going to go right that's going to go in in there basically and uh got some hardware we stopped in town got some hardware for the through bolts so now we've got to get the old engine and transmission separated and get the new transmission bolted up. So this is basically what we're going for. We just got to get the hem eye in the center there. Super easy configuration with that. And again, we're leaving these loose per the constructions. So we have a little bit of, you know, adjustability there. Firewall, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. It might be really close. We might have a little bit of room, but Clearly we can get a half inch right here if we got to scooch her forward just a little bit. Well, a guy and a guy are pretending to have a plan here. And that is try to leave the transmission in the back of the truck. So I think we're going to run all these bolts out right here. Probably take the intake off, chain this thing up and just see if we could take the tractor and separate these two, leaving this alone on the tire basically. And then on the floor somewhere, I don't know, here, maybe over there, not sure. Bolt up the new transmission to this engine and try to stab them in both at the same time. All right, intake coming off. Nice. Ooh, lots of, and a lot of oil. And that one and that one. I don't know what the deal is there. I don't know if that's... I could from the PCV system. Oh, maybe, yeah. One of the smart things to do on these Hemis is uh, run a catch can system from the PCV. And I have no... What? It, why, why? What am I looking at? Oh, my so goodness. So down here, you're looking at... In this valley, you're looking at, like, the cylinder shutoff valves here. Um, that's uh, from the NDS system. Oh, yay. And we're looking at leaves and... Things. This yeah. must be the heater do dippies, which I'll probably plug off. Anywho's now we can run a chain from back here, which I hope that holds, to those other dainty little bolts. Hope that holds to get this up enough to get the transmission bolts way down there off and try to separate these two. 14 months later. We got them separated. Uh, two big pry bars, taking turns making up our cuss words, ratchet strapping it to the box, tugging it the other way as hard as I could, lifting it up to the ceiling, slamming it back down. You know, finally got it. Apparently there's some, there was an inspection plate or something that, that needed to be snapped off, or you could just take this 10 millimeter out. Either way. It's disconnected. By the who and way, you need every size metric socket you own to get this far in this assembly if you're curious. It's like 10, 13, 15, 17, 15, 13, 13, 15, 12, 17, 10, 9, 11. I don't know. I'm learning as I go. By the way, look how little this torque converter is. Isn't that cute? Look at that. Well, that escalated. Awesome quickly also the oil drain over there is completely full right now i don't know if you could tell or not 
But over here, we got this stripped down to where I think we need it. Got the manifold off. Uh, fun fact, you need to take the entire engine mount off just to get the heat shield off the manifold in order to remove the manifold, which the manifold gasket is then part of the inside heat shield. Anyway, 37 different metric bolts later, we're down to this. Same on this side. That's where we needed to be. And this guy, I have to look at the constructions. I believe it's this way based on the ear and the polyurethane. Is going to bolt right on like that. And that's going to get us that GM style clamp that's going to drop right into the truck like you saw earlier. I do have to get different hardware for the block. These bolts are too long and I failed to order the new hardware kit for those. No big deal. Quick trip to the hardware store. Got to get this torque converter off. I got a different torque converter that comes with a different 46RE that's specifically built for a truck. Right now I'm going to drain the oil and we're going to put a different oil pan on. It's actually for a newer Dodge Ram pickup. Or I guess they just go by Ram now. I don't, I don't know. Okay, when it comes to this stuff, it's, it's the, it, this thing is back here. It's not up here, is what I'm saying. <laughs> This is the oil pan kit a guy needed. See, we're going to a rear sump instead of the front sump that that one has right there. So we got a different pickup tube later, dipstick with the checker downer, and two new gaskets because I guess you don't know what flavor you need yet. This one has kind of a provision in the windage tray. I don't know. This one doesn't. We're just gonna take that one off, see what we need. Blast this on quick. And then all we got left is the mounts, and we're ready to get her mounted up to the transmission. Well, hey, the oil pan is on the Hemi, and that went pretty well, actually. Slid right on there, and it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Just in case you missed my intro, I'm an idiot. Just floating that out there. Please don't ever, even if there's a fire, lay under an engine hoist with an engine dangling from a 550-pound chain while holding up a Hemi. It's not, it's not a good idea. But a guy realizes when, you know, we've just got to get stuff done. So we did it. But please do as I say, not as I... Not as a dude, not as I once did, because it's past ten. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. There was a little plug we had to knock out to get the new dipstick into the thing. That was something I almost missed in the constructions. And also, apparently, you have to completely remove a main bolt, put another one in, because that has a peg on it to hold up the longer pickup tube, because now it's a rear sump pumper. We're gonna move on to putting the clamshell motor mounts in this thing, get the exhaust manifold gaskets in, and the new hooker exhaust manifolds. So the engine portion should be pretty ready to drop in. Then we're gonna mate it to that 46RE with 74 different kinds of metric and standard bolts. <laughs> That's neat. That looks this side-ish. I don't know what I'm looking at here. Yeah, that doesn't bolt into there. That doesn't match that. That could take a bolt. These, I think, might be for this. No. Yes. On a Greyhound bus. Thank you. Oh wait, the dipstick tubey upper, I think has a bolt provision on the tubey. What in the devil? I gotta get my face right under this. This side went in good. And these are hooker black hearts specifically made for the swap, I guess. 
they tuck in a little bit more than the traditional manifold, which kind of comes down more in this area. So it's going to be interesting to see how these fit with the firewall. Pretty excited to see that drop in. Uh, it's coming together pretty good. Got to do this side over here really quick. Get that snugged up. And then we'll be mating the 46RE transmission. Now, as far as the shift machine goes, you know, the go forward, go backwards box, there were some options out there, but I wanted something with a warranty. I could have got something from a junkyard for a thousand bucks, sure. Could have got something, you know, non tested off the face space or just rebuilt on Craigslist for $1,500, call it. But keeping in mind what I want to do with this truck eventually in a couple months, I didn't want to put something in that didn't have a warranty or that I didn't necessarily trust. So I decided to go all the way in to 10 on this 46 RE. Went back to Monster Transmission who did the transmission for the crew cab and some other stuff that I have. And they also built a specific torque converter for this combination, being the pickup, the rear end gear, the tire size I plan on putting on and all that. Plus we even got some burn rubber brewery. That's the juice that you put in it. I'm gonna get this uncrated drag her in the shop here see if we can get them hooked up huge snag fellers here's the converter that came off of the vehicle and on the back side you can see that it's two bolts on three wings so six bolts total if my math is correct and that bolts to this flex plate in a traditional manner on this hemi well the torque converter i got and they're working through it right now trying to figure out what happened I don't, this is very early or old Chrysler, I think, is what I'm looking at here, where the flex plate is essentially welded to the torque converter. I don't have any way to affix this to that unit right there, and that is a huge halt. Now, could I bolt the transmission to the engine, just drop it in, do some fitment tests, and then drop it out again, and then put the right one back in, and then put it in again? Yes, but that is a lot of work. I'm just kind of thinking, might pump the brakes that don't work very good and just see if we can figure this out. But in the meantime, we are going to drop the Hemi into the truck and make sure that everything fits well there. And that may could allow a guy to start roughing in some wiring here, which is what I'm just, my forehead's beating up with sweat. Do you know what I mean? Ran into another issue I don't have a resolution for yet. This is cop car engine. Cop brakes, cop axle, cop wheels, cop heads. It has this nifty oil cooler, which is really cool. Bolts on this block here, and then you would have a coolant hose down here on the lower rads, and up here by the thermostat, kind of let the temperature through housing. Problem is, when I get the tape measure out, the stick that has the numbers on it, and did a bunch of math magicianals here. Back of the polyurethane forward, front of the polyurethane forward, center bolt down, standoff down. Any way that I measured it, the total length of this standoff was going to hit the suspension steering components right here. And I can lay this welding rod through and measure from the bottom of the eyelet and measure it this way or just add an eighth of an inch and get a true measurement. And no matter how I cut it, we're going to be an eighth of an inch short and rubbing against this. And the biggest issue and concern is, could I maybe, you know, jerry-rig it? Sure. But the next guy that owns this truck, how is he going to change the oil? It's going to be a nightmare. So now we're looking at 45s and relocation kits and block off plates and all sorts of stuff. We're going to back burner that. Oil pressure doesn't seem that important this particular second. Set this thing in and just make sure the mounts are okay. We've got firewall clearance. The exhaust is going to aim the right direction. And then, like I say, I can start at least eyeballing some wiring and getting other things moving. So. Let's twirl this around, see if we can drop her in. Hemi and a Chevy, part one. We're gonna to try to just ease this in, see what happens here. Okay, in. 
Oof. We might have a lot more room than I thought. Okay, downage. Yep. About 16 feet, give or take. Looks like this side's gonna try to land first. More. Okay, hold on. Keep going. Oh, major issue. I spy. Still stopping. Yes, that is a problem. I mean, not so much here, but. That's a big problem. There. I'm half inch away from seating the bolt. Yikes. But it is a nice day. Uh -huh. yeah. So what a guy needs is a Gen 3 Hemi charge and whirler relocation bracket try. And basically it's a black piece of steel that moves this completely up and out of the way and adds a secondary idler pulley. And you put a different belt on it and that'll clear your frame rail instead of hacking that out. Unfortunately, I don't have that right now, but we're gonna get that out of the way completely and just continue test fitting the Hemi in, the engine bay in general, so I can try to keep my feet moving here. Okay, charger whirler's out of the way. We're gonna try to get the passenger side to drop in now. All right, bring her down. Keep coming. A little bit more. Right there. Wow. Just, I need like an eighth of an inch up. You got it. Jim. <laughs> that was it. There's a Gen 3 Hemi sitting in an 82 Chevy C10 for some reason or another. The Hemi half is coming along. The biggest thing I was worried about was the firewall clearance back here because there's a mess of wiring and heater hoses and doodabs and I think I might bring the Terminator X Max out through the firewall here where the old AC lines went. Well, just come over here, I'll show you really quick. Now keep in mind, this might tilt down some once the transmission's in there, but a good indication is the polyurethane isn't stretched out one way or the other. Everything seems to be aligned very well there. By the way, you can see now the issue we were going to have with the oil cooler and the oil filter. There's absolutely no way that was going to work down there. But look at this room we've got back here. That's, this is more than you get with a big block Chevy. You can't do this behind the valve cover. So that is fantastic news for the trunk of wiring that's gonna come down. So we'll have starter, all the accessories. We're gonna have fans that we gotta bring out. Of course, the battery sits over here somewhere. Boop, boop. All that wiring. But man, very pleased. AC fits in. Let's go take a close look at that. If you get creative over here, of course, this is just wiring. You can move that. There's a port there. And here's a port here. If you used AN lines, you could probably put a sharp 90 and be very, very close to making that work as well. The hooker manifolds look like they're gonna work fantastic. Dipstick worked. Pretty simple, actually. Just gotta get this on here at some point, see what that looks like up here. Well, my buddy Brian had to head back home and thanks to him for his help. I got my buddy Chad here now and luckily he's a exhaust expert. He did the work on the crew cab, which I asked for some pretty difficult things there, the way the tips come out and there was cutouts and all sorts of stuff. And he did a fantastic job. So I've enlisted him to do the exhaust on the Hemi half as well. But first, he's talked me into pulling the engine again because he wants to fix the broken bolts and the manifold and do it correctly. Which, yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty good. Maybe I could talk him into doing that work too. But no, honestly, we're gonna pull this out, get those manifold bolts taken out hopefully try to weld a nut on we're going to mate it up to the transmission even though we don't have the torque converter i want to try to get this lined up correctly for two big things one the manifolds the way they're sitting in the truck need to be pretty darn accurate because if chad's going to be welding in a full kit 
if we tilt this thing one, two, three degrees, well, the axes and the Ys are off in the back and the whole thing doesn't fit, right? Something like that. That's exactly right. The other thing is, if we can get this in close enough and rough in a trans cross member, I need to measure for a drive shaft. I have the old one, obviously, that's gonna to connect to the rear, but we have to change the output shaft and most likely the length. So I gotta get that measured up and get that up to Nashville or somewhere in Bami. I don't know yet, I haven't even looked to be honest. But that's probably gonna take a week or more, so we gotta get that going. But let's get this thing out of here. Oh, we figured we'd just mate the Hemi up to the beep boot chip machine right on while it's on the thing. And then we could just pick it right off of that transmission stand when we're done. How many more feet you need? 32. Oh boy. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Look you there. Like we almost know what we was doing. Oh. You can see I'm stacking 37,912 washers on here. That's because, well, I don't have the right hardware. I got the hardware that worked with the old transmission with the Hemi, but we're switching and obviously the cases are now different. So we got to run into town and get tacos and margaritas, allegedly. Anyway, so I'll pick up the right hardware and a couple other things over there. We're doing the old LS trick, just welding a nut on. First, we got to get a little nub. The bolt broke off like an eighth of an inch in the head, so we got to get something to get that nut onto, and then he can weld that to it. Now I got to quick get a half inch, and while the heat's hot, we'll get that out. Is it coming? Oh, it moves Something, something's turning. I don't know if it's the weld or the... Oh. 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 Was it moving? Uh, I think it moved a little. All right, let me get you another bolt extractor 6000. Come on. stubborn one, isn't it? Yes, it is. I think it may be turning. I don't want to jinx it. The secret, fellas, is to hit them when they're nice and hot. There it comes. Nice. So that side is fixed. This side is already fixed and back on. So now we'll have no exhaust leaks or anything like that. We're going to get... Uh, this big boy mounted up so we can get the angleage right, like I was saying earlier, and then we gotta figure out, what what is this, why? Why does it do that? See how this sits in the truck? It's a cross member, then we can measure the drive shaft and we can cut him loose with the exhaust kit, which I'll show you right now. So I picked up this Hooker Blackheart system. It's 73 to 74 GM C10 short bed truck exhaust dual side pipe elators behind the rear tires and it comes with all the hangers and mufflers and clamp elators and everything you need now obviously i got a long bed over there but chad will figure that out we may just dump it before the axles but it comes with all the mufflers and everything of course he probably will not use the clamps uh, i'm going to have him weld it because well he welds exhaust every day 74 days a week so this is gonna look really nice though. Look at how big this is. Pretty nice. And then I've also got these down pipes. These are also from Holly that have the O2 built right in. And these are made up with the Hooker Blackheart manifolds that are on the rig and that has all the flanges and gaskets and everything. And check this out. Some of you have asked, way ahead of you. Hemi half, I got two sets here just in case I mess up, but. The goal here is, I'm just gonna probably run the landline whirler down to save a bunch of money, but remember how they used to say heavy half back in the day? That's what this is gonna look like. And it's that same gold, black kind of look, same font, or very close. 
think that's gonna look pretty cool. Well, for the second time, the Hemi's in, but for the first time ever, it's made it to a Chrysler transmission. Lots of room in this thing. Of course, it's dangling like this a little bit right now, but that's what we're trying to avoid is we don't want Chad to spend all the time welding this exhaust system up and the manifold angle changes because then the whole kit is moot. So we're gonna lift the truck up in the air, try to rig in, maybe bolt in, but I'm still missing an adapter piece I had to order and just try to figure out right approximately where this needs to be so we can get to work on the rest of it. Well, here's the under the neath view. Remember, I think I mentioned this here shield and I said, boy, the guy ought to take this out before I put the tank in. Maybe I just thought that in my head, I can't remember. But sure enough, not only is it in the way of the go forward, go backwards machine here, boop, boop, but the tank's in the way because we gotta get to that bolt and that bolt, and it'll also clear up a little bit of room for the exhaust coming out. The good news is, look how much room we got in here. This is a Hemi we're talking about, fellers. This goes away, I'm probably gonna have to use well, I'm going to be honest, I don't even know how this thing shifts. So, that's another thing i got to figure out. But I was thinking probably like a low car shifter or something, hopefully. Looks like a juice line there or something. There's bleep bloops here, and more bleep bloops there, and another one here. I don't, I don't know. That's probably another juice fitting. i got to do some research on that. But anyway, we're going to drop the tank so we can get the shield out. And also while the tank is down, I need to check the fittings that these go into. For the life of me, I can't remember if I torcolated them. And I got to make sure they're tight. On the crew cab, they were not tight. And Chad, who's here helping me, actually had to drop the tank and work on those fittings. So I want to make sure I do that now. Also, some of you have mentioned I didn't rebuild the brackets meaning tss, tss, tss. so i'm going to do the right thing and just leave them alone and put them back just like that it's raining cats and kittens might get a little bit loud on a feller and a fella tank is down that went easy we got most of the bolts out from that i don't know what it is some sort of force field under the floor and only on one side for some reason there's a hidden bolt way up front chad's going to delete that with the sawzall This is the original seat nut that is affixed via melted lava to the bottom of the floor up here, you know, in the factory position. But it snapped off when I was getting the seat out. So while this tank is down, I had forgotten about it, but that reminded me because this fell down and hit us in the retina. Chad's gonna weld up a, where's it at? Here it is, a washer and a nut on the bottom here so when a guy puts the seat in we're safe we got all four bolts i know that's weird just compute it we're gonna have all four bolts in the seat now we can get that welded up in there real quick boom so this little rig right here is the hemi swap trans cross members for a 73 to 87 we're uh, working through trying to figure out the polyurethane right now. It looks like we might be able to use one bolt hole on both sides and might have to drill two, but that's just a preliminary guess using fingers and wristuses and forearms as measurements. We're going to get that in, get that bolted up to here, then we could start doing this with it and then figure out where this goes. But if you notice here, this gives you all sorts of different adjustments down the sides there's plenty of play chevrolet you know good old gm they give you all the different flavors for transmissions right in here so it should be fairly simple we just might have to punch one over on that side over there well we got the cross member figured out here and it took a little bit of shimmying the plates don't tell you which way is forward backwards drinkers captains whatever not a big deal it just took a couple times flip flopping and doing the thing 
The biggest issue is this sensor right here, which I'm assuming is the VSS, I don't know. I don't work at NASA, okay? But it was binding up in here, so we had to keep working this uh, cross member around until we could get that just right. What Chad's doing right now is bolting up this plate on the outside of the frame because I have to drill one hole right here uh, so this will connect on the back side. But if you think about it, for a cross member, that's for a Gen 3 hemi swap drilling one hole, that ain't shabby. The rest of it literally bolts right in, piece of cake. Comes with the hardware too. Although we've lost like how much, 80% of the hardware by now? Uh, yeah, about 110%. <laughs> so we just keep hitting the parts bin, but they were nice stuff like this, but we're down to use nuts and washers and things like that, but is what she is. This will probably actually work right here. This is more of a Chevrolet mount, like a 350, 400, 700 R4 kind of deal. Uh, we just wallered out these provisions in here inside and we're able to get it up in here. You can also mount these back here, I think. I don't know, but this is what we're doing because that's where all the Chevrolet mount holes over here are. And it's gonna work. I did have to unhook the emergency brake cable right now. Uh, Chad is telling me, and I believe him, he does the square bodies stuff that the, the later model, like uh, 80s square bodies, moved, and I know what he's talking about, there's two cables over here on a buckle that pull both the emergency brakes and everything runs down the side and it's a little bit more compact. Where the earlier years, the this cable actually comes down right here and has a buckle and a cable runs over here to a hook and the other cable runs over here to a hook. So it's gonna, it would have been right in the way of the exhaust, basically like this. And I'd rather have the exhaust tucked up in here and done right than have an e-brake. I mean, who? you don't need an e-brake. That's what park is for. Come on. Here. Guys, here's the thing. I'm really lazy, you know? So we got a under the cab frame drill press machine. Oh. And that works great. Look at that. Wow. Oh, let's bring her down a gear. There we go. A little more pedal. Boop. Got that wheel? It's through? Wow, that went quick. Cross member is officially in, bolted home. That's looking great. Chad's starting on the exhaust now. We're gonna put it in without gaskets because unfortunately, everything we're doing today, I get to unbolt and take down in the near future so I could put the proper torque converter and or torque converter with conversion kittage to the Hemi situation. So what he's gonna do is lock this thing up where maybe, hopefully, I could just drop it down a couple feet and get this trans out. I'm not sure. I might even try to enlist him to come back and help put that converter in, but we're just trying to hit 16 birds with three rocks or whatever the, whatever the saying is here. Keep our feet moving, keep this program ticking. We already kind of mocked in the drive shaft. I'll show you here in a little bit. It's too long, which is great because they could just shorten it, balance it, put the right yoke on it. When you got to add length, they got to retube them typically, and that's way more money. So I'm going to save some bucks there, but it's coming along pretty good. It looks fairly good right there, don't it? It ain't bad. So kind of shape those. Mufflers. Again. Chad's starting to put the kit in here. And uh, the only issue we have so far is the initial hooker on the manifold spout flange down to be it's two and a half. The kit is three. So we're gonna have to do a little magic there. But he's gonna make it happen. That's what he does for a living. Well, we're going to take advantage of this situation because Chad's been doing mufflers for a long time. How long have you been doing this now, Chad? I first started doing exhaust work when I was 17. I just graduated high school. I was going to... So like three years is what you're saying. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, i done it for about 10 or 12 years, stopped for a while, and then uh, been doing it again for another four or five. Nice. So I could tell you, if you can do it, Take your truck, a car, whatever, to a shop. Like I take mine to Chad when I want something 
pretty trick or like custom fitment or symmetrical like we were talking earlier just right. really nice take it to a shop these guys have been doing it forever but I mean kits are kits if you got to do a kit you got to do a kit I'm doing a kit nothing wrong with kit but where do you start with these things the first thing to do is try to get it bolted up to the manifold leave everything loose you know don't tighten it up you're going to have to move it you know a quarter of an inch of movement up there will equate to a foot of movement at the bumper of the car okay so you want to be able to move it and loose fit it everywhere get everything in place make sure everything looks correct everything's symmetrical that it, nothing's in a bind or nothing looks odd and then you can start tightening up and going and make sure that everything just stays where it's supposed to be and nothing gets you know bent or twisted or uh, out of shape and, right. and then you can start kind of tightening up make sure that places like this where a clamp goes that it's slid all the way in that it's not only halfway in and that it seizes, seats down good don't try to over tighten it you know like a gorilla or a sasquatch <laughs> yeah uh, that's a good point because if you're loose on joints by the time you get to the end of the truck if you have four joints you could be three and a half inches long or yeah out of out of whack basically. yeah and and the twist of it you know a lot of these kits there's a lot of movement a lot of twists some of them really just don't fit great yeah. anyway uh, so you know there's a little bit of movement here in there it just makes a tremendous difference in right the overall. so put them together like legos keep it away from wires fuel suspension movement yeah always watch cables lines uh you know gas yep. line brake line wires so are you going to clamp these or are you going to weld them since the transmission may is going to have to come out we may clamp this side that way if you've got to take it apart you, you can, can do slide it in pieces. back off yeah. correct and then okay. once you get it back together you can spot weld it or whatever you want to do there it's okay. up to you whatever yeah. you want to do cool good move well there you got it from chad the muffler man So I just started laying out some of the wiring harness here. I got the coil drivers plugged in and all this. That goes, basically the firewall is gonna probably be right here. And the rest of this comes through. Uh, reason being is we needed the plan for the OBD2. No, that's wrong, the O2 sensor. Whatever the OB1 Kenobi, this thing does a computer box reading for the stuff for the fuel. Because Chad's going to plug the other side before we put that in so we don't have to mess with it. So we're going to go passenger side because there's a whole mess of, well, I don't know what to do with the shifter linkage and everything else. Fitment. So the rest of this, this is crank and knock sensors. And I'm assuming this is water and oil and IAC and TPS and all that. But it should be plug and play. Looks like a lot, but I think we'll get through it. Jessica broke down in Diamond Rio, you know, our trusty brand new golf cart. Nope, 58 years old. By the time I got that back up to the house and troubleshot her, Chad's almost got this thing whipped out. Well, Chad just finished up with the exhaust kit here. He made it fit great and it looks amazing. Now keep in mind, this kit was actually for a short bed Chevy, but we made it work on this long bed. Basically, he took the exit exhaust pipe later piece, cut her out some chisels, and then swooped that out in there. But man, it does look good. I can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like. He's fixing to leave here in a minute and head back home. He's got quite a drive. But I talked him into taking an old project with him so he could put mid-length headers on it for me and an exhaust system because, well, I ain't got the times and he's the right guy. So let's go down to Rusty Acres and see if the Freedom Hawk still fires up. <laughs> yeah. 
it's, well, it's been a long time. So here is the Freedom Hawkuses. Should have called it the Freedom Eagle, but hindsight's always 1311. It's been sitting a long time, and apparently the window doesn't roll up. That's, that's fine. It has been virtually untouched. Rolled off the trailer after the Hoopty World Championship or whatever it was. Changed the wheels out. Here it sat. So, we're going to get this fired back up. I want to bring this rig back around and use it. It's got, it's good, you know. Check the fuel. This is one thing i got to change. It ain't got the capacities. I forgot the shocks work on that. Go fast juice. Oof. There's maybe enough to get it on the tray more. And that is it. This is a really solid bird. There ain't no rust anywhere. It's kind of a shame what I did do it actually. Oh, hey there little feller. Why don't you get out? Okay. It's got a battery, but I'm willing to bet it needs the jump assist on it. The other thing I gotta do is clean up the wiring after I added the nitrous to it. Yeah, she's got nitrous. Things got out of hand with relays and I just did not have time to finish the wiring or anything like that because honestly, I worked 36 hours straight or something like that. And then I couldn't drive the car the next day or touch it. I had to wait till the following day, but then it was my day to run the car. So I didn't have time to figure any of this out. Not sure why, but there's a 16 inch seat on this side and I look like a busted can of biscuits right now. It ain't good. That's my seat. That's the one that's supposed to be over here. But anyway, hear the fuel pump, fans turned on. That sounds like pressure, pump it a couple times. Oh, wow! Look at that! Small block Chevy. That's pretty, pretty incredible. Well, the Freedom Hawk is on its way to volunteer muffler. Get some pipe elators hooked on to that thing and do some other stuff. I mean, it's loud and fun, but... The open headers under the cut open floors on a guy's heels of the boots, you know, the CO2s, get a little bit woozy. Reminds me of the Rebel a little bit. You guys will see that on something really, really fun. I don't know. It's a ways out. Month. Two months. I'm trying to plan ahead. I know that's a little bit mind bottling. But in the meantime, there's a lot of work to be had on the Hemi Half C10 back here. Let's get this drive shaft measured up. So first thing after about 16 cups of coffee, guy gets his wristwatch on and a go on the town shirt, shoot over to a drive shaft shop and they could do the output shafts and the input shafts with the U-joints and the balancing of the tube with the right dimensions. <laughs> okay, come here, check this out. Now every shop's a little bit different, but I've been pretty lucky getting away with three basic measurements. Well, I guess technically four. One is from the output shaft seal all the way down to the center of the U-joint. And then we go from the end of the output shaft all the way down to the center of the U-joint. And the third one, I like to give them this depth measurement. Between the seal and the shaft here, I'm gonna stick a pick in there, mark it, pull it out, and measure that. So they know how much shaft play can go into this puppy. Right, because I got to take that into account too. With all of those dimensions, they should be able to wop up the drive shaft for us. Of course, this end stays the same. I'll have them put a new U-joint in it for me, mazel. Right, it's there, just get it done, and then it'll hook in and do the thing, and, you know. But up here, I don't know what this is or how it works. We need something to hook onto this guy up here. Okay, so again, we're going from the seal to the center. Make sure your tape is nice and straight. This is critical, fellers. 68 and 3 eighths. I need to write that down. Because I'll forget it 
what did I say, 50 and a half? Something like that. I'm gonna quadruple check this. You know, measure four times, cut 12, I think it's the saying. Yeah, that seems to not have changed, 42 and a quarter. Okay, and then the output shaft, right on the end of that bugger. Helps if you have a magnetized tape measures. 67 on the button if I had a button. This was, if this was a button, I think it would be 67. Let me check. Well, it's definitely 92. Wait, it's back to 67. Okay. All right, so the last one here is I'm just taking this pick, you know, I'm gonna jam it in there till it bottoms out, which might be this whole thing. I don't know. And I'm gonna hold my finger there and then we'll run a tape across it there and see what that measurement is. Yeah, almost the whole, almost the whole pick. And that's the throw or the play that the yoke has. Oh yeah. They're gonna need to know that. As your suspension travels, your drive shaft goes into the transmission too long of a drive shaft, you're gonna break the output shaft or the tail housing or bell housing. I, it's bad. It's the wrong math, is what I'm saying. Okay, what do we got here? Six and a half. Okay, that's it. Drive shaft measured. Well, we've made some tremendous progress on the Hemi Chevy here. It's been a blast the last couple days. We've got the Hemi and transmission fully bolted into the truck. There's plenty of room there. We've got the exhaust system in, the fuel system's prepped. We even got the seat covered already working on the interior. Next step is just plop that torque converter or the adapter in when that gets here. And then we start wiring. Pretty soon we're gonna hear this thing fire to life and we can start working on transmission linkage and all the other doodads. Hopefully get the front clip on and the cooling system, but it's going great so far. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it so much. We'll see you very soon.